or to a master teacher. Um, I've had people make tremendous breakthroughs in various skills, from fencing to dancing to tennis to singing, by working with the patterning of a master teacher. This is very important. You can do this. And you can do a lot of things. And have breakthroughs. Very interesting. When you use time alteration, subjective time it's called, you find that the usual lousy habit structures that and, and galloping sloth doesn't enter in. There's something about the time distortion that inhibits the old cataracts of the mind. Okay? Very important to remember that. There's just, there's just thousands of things I wish I could teach you. But anyway, an, another uh, aspect of this is the discovering a guiding archetype or quantum partner who can help you in your artistic endeavor, be it in writing, performing, producing, directing, writing. We are living in the time of the rising of archetypal structures. Now, I remember, um, well, let me talk about Catherine Hepburn. How many of you remember her? <laughs> I, I knew her slightly. And one of the things when I asked her once, I asked her a couple of questions <laughs> about the African Queen. How many of you remember the African Queen? Great picture. And it is about uh, a woman who is completely abstracted from nature. You remember that? Two little oddballs on this little boat. But what also is true about it is she's this you know, uptight uh, lady who has no relationship to nature. She says, nature, Mr. Allnow, is what we're put in this world to rise above. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then, of course, they get plunged into nature, and the nature archetype takes over, and they're able to triumph. Remember that? Yes. That it was a tremendous ecological picture. But Kate also said to me once, I said, what do you feel like being Catherine Hepburn? She says, I'm not Catherine Hepburn. I'm good old Kate, Yankee Kate. I, I scrub my own floors. I, 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 I garden. I, I, take, I paint the house. Catherine Hepburn is this creature, this creature who lives on my shoulder who I have to take care of, but that's not me. You know? <laughs> so she was actually had been part of an archetype called Catherine Hepburn. <laughs> but she was very different from Catherine Hepburn. You know? um, th this... But archetypes are more. Archetypes can be there for you as great guiding principles. Whether you give them legendary names, hmm? or whether in point of fact they are there as higher essences. I'm going to give you an example of living with an archetype. I wrote a book about this called The Search for the Beloved. But I want you to think about your entelechy. Entelechy is an Aristotelian word. It means, well, what does it mean? It means, it's the acorn, it's the entelechy of an acorn to be an old tree. It's the higher, deeper purpose. It's your second genesis. It's, it's the entelechy of a popcorn kernel to be a fully popped entity. It's the entelechy of a baby to be a grown-up human being. It's the entelechy of the President of the United States to find a decent archetype, but anyway. It's a... <laughs> but entelechy is, think of it, it's not unlike Rumi's The Friend. Think of it as The Friend. <laughs> because when I've studied high order creativity, I find that most of these people feel themselves to be guided, sustained, evoked, inspired by this extended reality that they're calling archetype or Intelligent. Okay? Put up the hand, so I'm going to ask you to do it. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine that standing before you is your essential self. Your self is if you'd had a thousand years to develop. And this essential self, the entelechy, who we would call a friend, is looking upon you with so much love with such a sense of deep, deep, deep affirmation of you. And you feel yourself affirmed, loved, called into higher being, juiced, <laughs> ignited. This great being, the friend, knows your failings, your founderings, but also your successes, 
your becomings, knows the higher patterns that you can take. And you feel yourself so deeply sustained and loved and called into the truth of your being and the higher pathway of who and what you really are. And feeling this extraordinary sense of being deeply loved, empowered, seen, nurtured, and you are being cherished by this entelechy, the friend, who from this moment forward, should you choose, can be with you for the rest of your life, a companion, a higher companion on the road of your true becoming. And so I ask yourself to feel yourself so loved, so deeply seen, so quickened in the affirmation of who and what you truly, truly are. Loved, cherished, acknowledged, seen, evoked into the beauty and the depth and the brilliance of your emerging condition. And with it, my friends, your emerging deeper story. I'm thanking this great archetypal being and knowing all you have to do is do a process like this. Feel yourself loved, sustained, evoked, affirmed, and begin to watch the unfolding of your life in remarkable ways. Thank you. And you begin to live the title of my autobiography, A Mythic Life. As I'll say to now, you are mythic beliefs. You contain all the great stories, you really do. When I work around the world, the thing I do is I try to find what is the evocative story. In India, I work with the Ramayana and Gandhi. In Australia, I work with the great Aboriginal creation stories. Wherever we go, we find that if you work with story, especially the mythic stories, we've talked about story, we haven't talked much about the myth. The myth is the coded DNA of the human psyche. It gives you the rest of the story. It doesn't end with the tragedy, it ends with the resurrection and the going on for the next part, the development. The story itself is changing. Even simple stories are being raised to a, a transformational perspectives. Look at some simple American story, mythic story, The Wizard of Oz, yes? Poor little girl, she's living in an outmoded situation. Everything's sort of, especially in the movie, you know, straight lines, great dust storms, Miss Gulch, you know, threatening the only lively person in, in the first part of the film, you know, little doggy. Uh. And she goes to her aunt, Auntie M, Auntie M, oh, go away, Darcy, can't you see we're counting our chickens? In terms of American way of life, but anyway. <laughs> and so it takes a, a hurricane, it takes a tornado to take her into the collective unconscious where she lands, you know, after going through the tornado, da 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 and she lands in the technicolor world of the creative unconscious us. Yes? Yeah. How many of you have done that? It took a tornado of one kind or another to get you to move. This year is going to be tornado year, so you watch it. Yeah, the plan to go to Oz. Anyway, what, I, what happens then, of course, the little people, the bunchkins, a high Elizabethan civilization, very different from Kansas. You know, uh, waiting for a person, I can't leave all that kind of thing. <laughs> and then the great archetypal beloved, Glenda the Good Witch, who sets her out on her journey in the road of spiritual pollen, the yellow brick road, yes? And meeting disempowered parts of herself, the disempowered mind, who was the scarecrow, the disempowered heart, the disempowered, no, that's the, that's courage. the tin man. Disempowered courage, lying. And after many adventures in which they grow in mind and body and spirit and heart, they finally are able to get the broom and bring it to the shaman, the wizard who turns out to be a miserable shaman but a very great psychotherapist. <laughs> who gives them the truth of who they are. And then when she goes home, she says, it was all in my own backyard, meaning the collective unconscious of the human race. I mean, that is a myth, and that's a new rising myth, too, and it's why it has kept on. Myths are rising because we need a higher, potent story that keeps opening up, opening up, opening up, as many people here have spoken, and is giving us 
the directions, the strategy, and the lure of becoming to who and what we really are.